check out the uh, 210 gallon tank. It's the standard, uh, I believe it's an Aquion tank and with the dual overflows, six feet long, two feet front to back. And this, uh, as you have seen probably in the last video, if you saw the sump video, this one is running a uh, pretty extravagant sump in my opinion. Um, I really love the sumps and uh, it's one of the uh, things I really like about this tank and all of my tanks really that, that have sumps. So let's, uh, let's dive into it. So let's hit on the lighting. I just opened the top part of the canopy, the three doors here. Uh, I am using Kessel A360S or excuse me, A360X uh, Tuna Blue Lights on these tanks. They are fully adjustable, really awesome lights. Uh, the reason I ended up actually getting these lights uh, was because I had corals. This was a reef tank uh, before I changed it over to just the fish only. So I uh, apologize for the glare, by the way. I'm trying to uh, get a better angle here for you. So uh, anyways, I have the three lights. Uh, Kessel lights are great, really high quality. I love the shimmer, although it may give some people seizures. I do really enjoy the shimmer. I think it's really awesome. Looks like the sun does uh, in real life. And uh, it does come with a hefty price tag, unfortunately. And if this was originally just a fish only tank, I would probably, I don't know, it's hard to say. I would probably not go the Kessel route only because of the high cost. These lights, um, they're about $450 a piece. I have three of those. And then of course the cables, mounting brackets, and then you also need the interface which actually controls them. So roughly uh, I'd say um, $1,600 or $1,700 later, you have a setup of Kessel lights and a beautiful shimmer. Um, now for a fish only tank, that's definitely overkill, but like I said, I had corals prior to this, so it is what it is. But I definitely do love the lights. Uh, it gives a great look to the tank in my opinion. And let's go check out the engine room. All right, here's my favorite part of the tank and favorite part of all of my tanks, really. I love the sumps. Here is a uh, Trigger Systems Sapphire 44 sump. It's a rather large sump and um, it's doing a great job. This one in particular, they come in different colors. This one is the uh, clear acrylic and the clear blue acrylic design. Really like how it looks. Starting from the left hand side, it uh, comes down here from both uh, overflow boxes. Both pipes come down here, overflows, kind of hard to see, especially the reflection, but overflows into this uh, three sock area. There are three four inch diameter socks in here with the uh, water silencer. So this thing is actually super, super quiet, really nice. Uh, over here on the left hand side is uh, my Jabao uh, DCP 10,000. Um, pump right here on the left. That is the uh, main control box for the main pump This right here Is the uh, Kessel if I can get it to focus is the Kessel interface I was talking about that controls the lights. It is all uh, Automated with sunrise to sunset and uh, last but not least on the end here is the Heiger uh, I think this one is a 800 watt. Yes, a 800 watt uh, heater very nice uh, heaters, by the way. If you guys are not familiar, the Heiger heaters have been great for me. I've been using them for about three or four years now, probably. So, moving on to the sump. Just to break it down a little bit, here is a protein skimmer right here. This nastiness uh, collects all this nasty crud and junk. Kind of hard to get it in focus here, but you can see all that nastiness that's in there. I dump this thing out about at least once a week is a Reef Octopus protein skimmer. Now, uh, the next section, I have a handful of live rock. There's also a small fish you guys could probably see in there. That is a Blue Devil or Blue Fiji Damsel. He's pretty nasty, so he got put into the penalty box. He's doing just fine in there. And I've got some, uh, trying to get to uh, focus here, sorry guys. Got some uh, port foam in this little baffle area along with some of that uh, filter matting stuff bed matting stuff great stuff uh, I do use on my saltwater tanks I do use Kemi pure blue this is the large bag of Kemi pure blue right there that helps keep my water super crystal clear which is always good 
and of course the Jabao uh, DCP 10,000 DC pump, which I use on a handful of tanks actually. It's a great pump. This uh, right here is a check valve, so I do not get uh, return flow back from the tank if I get a power outage. The return line, one goes to the right box, the other goes to the left side box up over here. On its way there, it branches off and goes into the UV sterilizer. This is an Aqua Ultraviolet 57 watt UV sterilizer up top, mounted horizontally. This pipe then comes out of the UV sterilizer and then cycles back through the sump itself. Also tapped off of the return line, if you follow my finger here, this is the main pump, the return line goes that way to the left side, this way to the right side return. Uh, right here it is teed off and this goes to my algae scrubber. This is an algae scrubber made by Aquatic Guys, really nice algae scrubber. There is a 30 watt LED uh, floodlight as you can see. On this side, there is also another one on the other side. For those of you who are not familiar with the algae scrubbers, what it does is it uses the lights to create algae on a plastic sheet or curtain, if you will, that is hanging in the middle there. So basically the algae is growing rampant on this plastic sheet and then I will take it out every so often and scrape it off and start all over again. So instead of the algae growing in the tank, it is growing in the UV sterilizer. Or excuse me, it is growing in the algae scrubber. So, just the overview of the sump area, again. All the um, orange and gray piping you see is PVC piping. It is just a fancier furniture grade uh, colored piping that I use on this tank. I'm actually going to change over my 300 and a couple other tanks to this. It is unfortunately not cheap. It is quite expensive for PVC piping. Uh, the amount of PVC piping and bulkheads and everything else that you see in here, unions, tees, uh, valves, etc. Um, I probably have a good $400 or so, just to give you an idea of what it costs, a good $400 at least uh, just in the plumbing work under here. And that's probably a really low ball number, but just to give you an idea, uh, if I were to do it with my typical white Home Depot PVC, it would probably cost a quarter of that, if that. So that's where we are down here with the uh, tank. I'm trying to think of what else we have down here of interest. Um, one really, really cool thing I have that I love and is new to me, hard to see, but up here, is a Wi-Fi uh, plug for the outlet so I can control um, that is actually controlling the algae scrubber because I do change the uh, timing on the algae scrubber from time to time so I actually have started I'm gonna make a separate video I've started using those Wi-Fi plugs on all of my tanks especially the fish room and they have been super awesome they're and they're relatively cheap so Guys, that pretty much wraps it up. Um, over here, if you're wondering, this is uh, just a clip for um, seaweed, nori. I feed these guys seaweed at least once or twice a day. You can see all the purple coralline algae. That's actually hard encrusted coral on all of the rocks. That grows pretty quick in this tank, especially with these lights. I do a water change on this tank uh, usually on average, to be quite honest, once every two months. I should be doing it probably once every month, but the water parameters check pretty good between the uh, algae scrubber uh, eating up those nutrients and uh, also the um, protein skimmer. So um, not a whole lot of maintenance. Uh, aside from that, I change out the filter socks once a week on this, three filter socks, replace them with newer ones. Uh, as far as fish goes, I have a handful of tangs, as you can see. I have two yellow tanks, a purple tang, a hippo tang, two clownfish, a uh, porcupine puffer. He is really cool if I can get him to come up to the front and show off his uh, bright uh, green-blue eyes. He doesn't want to come out to play right now, apparently. He's usually following me back and forth in the front of the glass. But uh, Green bird wrasse, very cool fish. Uh, it's hard to pick up the color on these fish with the blue light that comes off of these Kessel lights. 
So I do apologize for that, but uh, these little damsels, they are uh, beautiful colors, bright electric blue and yellow. I have a few of those in there. And then a uh, Heniocus, this black and white one with a yellow tail. He's pretty cool. They're pretty good size. This guy's about the size of uh, my hand. So they're pretty good size, these guys. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the saltwater video. Uh, I am going to definitely be adding some more fish. I'm going to be adding some larger angels and probably some other uh, larger uh, interesting fish to this tank. Probably in the next few weeks here or so, hopefully. So I will uh, keep you guys posted and updated as I go ahead and do that. One thing I did want to uh, mention that I forgot to as I walk around and look at the tank here. Uh, I have this Jabao... Um, wave maker here and I can't remember I apologize but uh, I can't remember the name of it right now it's one of these type of design wave makers and this tank I actually only have one of these because I only need one it's a really nice design the way it, it flows throughout the tank I'm actually considering putting just one of these onto the 300 cichlid tank and replacing the two standard wave makers that are on that tank with just this one low profile one I think it does a really great job. So anyways, uh, you guys have any comments, questions, please comment below. Let me know what you think. If you're interested and you'd like to see more of the saltwater tank, please let me know that as well. And I'll start showing more saltwater stuff, but uh, usually my channel revolves around the freshwater stuff, so that's what I've been showing. But this, uh, this beautiful saltwater tank, I mean, in my opinion, uh, beautiful. I love the fish, of course, the, the colors are amazing. I definitely want to get some more color, some more orange and some uh, red in there and mix it up a little bit, get some uh, variety. So as always, guys, thanks for joining me today. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And I'll have a bunch of new stuff coming out, especially with the fish room going on in the basement. As always, happy fish keeping. I'll talk to you guys soon.